Welcome to an integrated dynamics tutorial for Minecraft 1.12. Today I wanted to show a way to automate the Gorgolily from Britannia. I'm going to call it the Gorgolily because I don't know how to pronounce that. This might be a longer video, so I'm going to include chapters so you can skip the relevant parts. And I wanted to give a shout out if you don't know, the official Cyclops Discord for this mod is a really good resource. If you're having issues, you need help, there's a lot of helpful people. There's a channel specifically for asking questions, and it has a really good search feature for looking up old examples. Just search keywords like operator, flip, you know, if you're trying to figure something out. The example today is going to have a lot of operators. I'll be using the applies and I believe the conjunction, the flip, the pipe, and the constant. I figure it's helpful to kind of mention those among the other basic ones, just in case you're looking for a specific example on how something works. Also, I'm probably going to include a couple of questions at the end of this, something that I would like to know how to do better, but I don't know, and I'm hoping that somebody can correct me or give me, a, give me kind of a definitive answer. I want to explain a few things that I think are key points here for this build. So if you just want to see how it's constructed and then later how it's configured, just skip to the relevant chapters. I just wanted to point out that I'm using an additional mod, integrated NBT. As you can see, there's an extractor here and it gives you a nice GUI for drilling down into the NBT data. Without it, you can do it with just the programmer by searching NBT and you can pull out keys and all this stuff, which I don't know how to do. This is just a nice friendly GUI, so I'm going to use it and I kind of recommend it, especially if you're uh, just starting out. So this world item exporter, based on this predicate, if it's satisfied, it's actually going to allow items to get transferred through. And in an important setting I should point out here, if I don't point it out later, is the item transfer. I have it set to one because I only want one item going through here. If you feed this plant a whole stack, it will eat the whole stack and it'll all be wasted. And on the screen here, I actually have the digesting mana piece of data right here. So when I feed it something like steak, you'll see it must have been fed before because I've got diminishing returns. If I feed it a top tier item like miner stew, we have about 10,000 and it eats it pretty quickly. And if we give it steak again, you'll see it's about 5,000, which is the max for steak. So it's very important to alternate between food types. So that's what's going to go on here. This predicate is going to alternate between food types because you can look at the NBT data and you can see the last food that was eaten. So you just make sure it's not the same. Plus you make sure the cooldown is at negative one, which means it's finished digesting. So you're not wasting anything. And of course the mana pool that the flower can hold is maxed out. So anything additional just gets wasted, but that's fine. Um, going further into Batania with mana spreaders and all that to extract this is not not the point of this tutorial. If I throw steak in, it actually knows that cooked beef was just eaten, so it's not going to do anything. But if I throw in miner stew, it's going to throw in a piece and it waits till it's done eating and then it sends the next piece. And we can hear it cool down hits negative one and then it switches. And if you want to stop it, you can just make sure that you stop feeding a certain type of food to the chest. I'll throw it on this chest and I'll throw down the extractor and the variable store, which act as tunnels so the cable actually passes through the data. And if we go up, and I just kind of like the visuals of seeing the items drop, plus the flower, and then the block reader. And a display or two is nice to have for troubleshooting. So this should be all I need now. The labeler is handy to keep in your inventory, if you're not aware, for labeling cards. If it's in your inventory, you can actually label a lot of variables inside the uh, logic programmer, which you'll see. And a quick config issue, the only thing that has to be configured here separately is this predicate. At the very end is the item transfer rate, but I'll set that to one. I only want one item getting passed through the tunnel. So the block reader is going to be the first thing. We need to get NBT data. Even though it looks blank, there's something there, which kind of confused me at the start, but if you throw it in the screen, you'll see there's data. If I throw it in here, I can open up the subtile compare, I'm assuming. That's whatever Britannia made for a NBT 
tag structure. The last food is of interest. And I'll just grab the cooldown while I'm here. And then also the digesting mana just for troubleshooting. It's nice to see. And I believe this has to stay in here. Maybe it can go in the store, but I just typically leave it in here just to see the tag structure. If you pull it out, I'm pretty sure these references will break because as you can see the data, this is all one network. And even though they're labeled pretty good, I'm just going to rename them for good practice. Digesting mana, cooldown, last food. So the digesting mana, I'm actually going to stick in the screen and that's just for uh, diagnostics. So the first thing I think I want to work on is actually making the comparison to make sure it's not going to feed the same food twice for diminishing returns. So that'll be the, the first project. So putting cool down off to the side and focusing on the last food. If I search name here, we actually have item by name. And so what's that, what that's going to do is it's going to take a string and output a, an item, which is what we have here. If you notice the default value with the red quotes, that is the string we're going to get as an output. So we're going to feed in a string, we're going to, going to get an item back. And I always forget this, but if you click on the E and you have the labeler in your inventory, you can actually give it a name. So I'm going to call it string to item. The next thing we want is a comparison to make sure whatever item just was eaten, it doesn't equal the next thing that we want to send. So we're going to need a not equals relation. But if I remember correctly, I ran into an issue using this because I think it has to be an operator. It can't just be a, a strict Boolean. So if we go to operator and we search not equal, we'll get this one. And so we want to make an operator for this task. And I'm going to label it not equals. So now we can go to the apply and we can take this not equals operator and the string to item. And we'll give this one a name. I'm just going to call it food check. So before I get too carried away here, it's best to organize everything. This is the first thing I made, the NBT piece of data for last food, and we converted the string to an item. And then we made a comparison, not equals, and then this is our output, our food check. So I'm actually going to take this and stick it in here just to look at it. I'm still rusty at reading these, but I believe we're just going to input in any, a type any, which is actually going to be an item, and then it's going to output a boolean. So making sure it doesn't feed the same things twice. So using this thing just by itself will actually make it so it switches between food types. But there's a couple other things we have to address, and one of them is comparing stack sizes. If you push one item through here and you compare the one item stack with a whole stack or whatever number happens to be in here, they won't actually be equal because it's one compared to some random stack size. So we actually have to put in a size, um, a filter, I guess you would say for the size. So this is not, this is not the final step. I'll just hover over these real quickly in case somebody finds it helpful to read and I'm going to try to organize them. So now I'm going to set the stack size to one for comparison. Now what I want here is something to do with stack size and I believe it is the width stack size. You pass in an item and then an integer and it will set the stack size for that item. But there's a catch. I actually don't know what the item's going to be, so I can't set that. I actually have to set the integer because I'm trying to set input type 2 to 1. So I can't just use this by itself. I actually have to use an operator. So if I search the same, same thing, stack size, and we make the operator item with stack size. So there's my operator. Takes an item, 
and then an integer and sets it, sets the stack size for that item to whatever the integer is. But we're doing the reverse. This is the first time I've really used the flip command and I think that's all it is, is I'm just going to flip it. Item with stack size. I'm gonna call this F item with stack size. I don't know what the max um, length you can make is, but this seems to work for me so far. Now I'm going to apply those. So if we take the operator, the, the new operator that I've flipped, which is this one, and I apply one to it, it'll be happy. And I'm just gonna call this one basically um, flipped one. It's kind of the, it's all I need it to be. Again, not great at naming. So item with stack size, we flipped it and then we applied one to it and then this is the output. So now we're actually ready to pipe. We're actually ready to, to pipe a stack size of one for comparison and if it passes, to check that it wasn't the last food type. The size comparison first and then doing the food check it seemed to work for me. And I'm just going to call this next food. So this is deciding what the next piece of food is going to be. And trying to keep these in order again. This is the final output of all of these checks. Now we're good to do the cooldown timer that I made earlier. So I'll need another integer. This one will be a negative one. And I need another operator. This time though, it's going to be relational equals. So it'll just be equals. I guess you're technically supposed to do two equal signs, I think. And I actually believe here I have to use an apply to. So equals, we are going to take the cooldown timer and then the negative one. And notice how I'm using two applies here and apply to function. I don't exactly understand this yet, but when I tried to just use the relational equals without using this operator and just do, you know, this be equal to this, I think I had an error and I can't for the life of me remember what it was, but it's a bunch of work to dig into it. So I'm not going to do that. But if somebody can answer that, I would love to know. It's got something to do with a Boolean and an operator and types, like expected types. You get like a compilation error, I believe. I'll name this one cooled check. And I'll put them in here. So we've got the cooldown NBT data. And then we've got the negative one comparison. And then we're going to run the operator on that. And this is the output. So now this is going to basically be a Boolean if it's equal to negative one, true or false kind of thing, where this seems to still be an operator. And I was trying to pipe this into here and vice versa. I was trying to and them and it didn't like it. I wasn't able to do what I wanted. And so I asked, the, I asked a question in the Discord and somebody told me about a, another function. So what this constant function I think is supposed to do is it allows you to put in a Boolean or I guess type any here. And apparently it like discards the second input. I don't understand that completely. I would highly recommend searching the discord for discussions on the constant. But um, I think it's gonna allow me to convert this thing that resolves to a Boolean. Actually, if we throw it in here, see how it's a Boolean. We have to make it an operator, even though it says operator in there. Kind of confusing, but that's the way it is. So if I search general constant and I make this, and I'll name it K because that's what they seem to have in the uh, in the name of it earlier was K, and then apply. And what I think what's happening here is it's basically going to convert this thing that resolves to a boolean. It's going to make it an operator so it's compatible to pipe not pipe okay so constant k operator apply the cooled check and then we have this guy which i'll name 
K cool check just to remind me that it is part of the constant. I'll try to throw these back. Um, this is another piece. This is the cool check. I guess I can shimmy it over here. Just don't want to lose track. So now this is kind of my final result here, and this is my final result up there. I believe what has to happen with this constant is based on whether or not the first input, that's a Boolean, if it passes true, you can kind of and it with this next piece. But if it returns false, the whole thing just kind of fails its check. And I may not be wording that right, but uh, the conjunction is like anding predicates, I believe. So I believe this guy has to be the first one. If it's true, it gets anded with this, but if it's false, the whole thing cancels out, I think is how it works. So this is my result. We throw these back in, the cool check, and then that, we got a result here. So now I can go up here and pop it in the predicate spot and it's happy. And just for my own curiosity, there's not much to see here. We've got a predicate conjunction, any type any goes in, boolean comes out. So type any from the chest will come out of here if the predicate is satisfied. And a reminder, you have to go in here and set the item transfer rate to one, otherwise it will pass a whole stack. You can go over here and throw in stake. And it'll just sit there. If I throw in this mutton. And that's what a full piece of mutton actually generates. It's not as good as steak. And nowhere near as good as the miner stew. So that's the build. If I wanted to get really crazy, I thought about having a redstone switch. That would also be kind of added into the thing. But that just kind of made it extra complicated. So I didn't want to bother. Because I wanted a way to turn this machine off. To not just waste uh, food and mana. If my uh, mana pool was full, but what I think I'm going to do, like I said earlier, is take a redstone signal off the mana pool and then stop feeding in food items into the chest. And that's how I'll handle that. And so I had two questions. One of them I kind of already mentioned. Is there a way for the item transfer rate to get set by the predicate operator thing? Or do you have to go in here? I think you kind of have to go into the properties, but it'd be really cool if you could actually change properties with this somehow, but I don't know if that's possible. And question two is how would I use the materializer? The materializer makes a, uh, a dynamic variable constant. And so what people will do is they will take all of these cards and actually condense them into one card, but there's a catch. You have to be careful about the input variables. So the last food, like I would have to make a card to combine these all together as like a, a portable function so I could go to a different setup with it and use it somewhere else. I'm just curious if it's possible to do with what I've done here and how I would do it, what it would look like, and actually how many cards would it shrink it down to? I've got a feeling it might be like one, two, three cards, and then at the end you combine them. I'm not sure. I'm still kind of learning how that works.